Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Earlier this week I saw a fascinating article on the Archeo News website about something I knew very little about. That being the mysterious megalithic structures in the mountains of the island of Evia, the largest island in Greece after Crete. These megalithic marvels are known as dragon houses, and there are 23 of them on the island, mostly in the regions of Styria and Mount Oka. These mortar-free constructions are thought to date back to the pre-classical period of ancient Greece, the classical period beginning around 490 BC. But sadly for those of us who enjoyed Game of Thrones, although they are called dragon houses, they sadly have nothing to do with dragons. But what do I know? You know nothing, Jon Snow. These architecturally simple structures have stood pretty much intact for more than two millennia, and are built of rectangular and square thin stones, many of which are large monoliths, as we can see in this picture. The blocks are carefully fitted together, and it's estimated that some of these stones weigh as much as 10 tons. One large block measures 4 meters by 2 meters by 0 0.4. The rocks used to make these houses, geologically known as amphibolites, all come from the same area. The buildings have no foundations, with the lowest blocks fitted into the natural rock substrate. Their roofs are carefully and skillfully built with enormous plate-like blocks stacked in a pyramidal or step-like fashion, as we can see in this picture, which shows the main dragon house of Mount Oka. This structure sits on a small plateau between the twin peaks of a mountain, 1,386 meters above sea level. As stated, there are 23 of these stone houses on the island, and they each look to be situated in carefully selected areas. They're at specific vantage points to give the occupants a fantastic view of the surrounding landscape. Some of the stones that make up the structures are enormous, and they come from much lower elevations, so the builders must have had some kind of technique to move these massive stones up the hill and into position. As the article on Archeo News says regarding this picture of the entrance into a dragon house, just look at the sheer size of this monolith sitting on top of two sizeable post stones. The block directly above is even bigger. The entranceway into each dragon house is built like a trilithon. In the roof of each structure is at least one hole to let in the natural sunlight and moonlight. The roof beams are also sloping for draining rainwater. What is clear from looking at all these buildings is that expert architectural planning went into their design, a design that has been well executed by the builders. One dodgy calculation by the architect, one block that was placed in the wrong position, and the whole structure could have collapsed. The first modern reference of these buildings comes from 1797, when British geologist and geographer John Hawkins discovered the main one that's situated on Mount Oka. He believed it was an ancient temple. In truth, it was the best guess from Hawkins, and even though a number of other researchers explored them in the 19th century, their origins and purpose do remain a mystery. Some people believe they're possible lookout posts, but others think they were built to observe the heavens, that they had a religious and or astronomical purpose. This is because the Mount Oka Dragon House in particular is oriented towards the rising of the star Sirius around 1100 BC, a time that does fit in with when archaeologists believe they were built. Having religious buildings aligned astronomically is not uncommon for ancient Greece, so an alignment with the bright star Sirius should not be too surprising. Some of the locals do disagree though, and believe they are actually farmhouses, shelters or military structures. 
There are ancient quarries in Evia, and there is another hypothesis that these structures are actually the homes of the workers. But this does seem unlikely, because some are situated so high up in a very isolated position. I don't know how true this is, but according to the Archeo News article, in ancient local tradition, the word dragon doesn't just refer to a mythical beast, but to any person with superhuman powers. And therefore some say they are physical representations of the homes of the mythical Greek gods. But apparently, the ancient word drakon can be traced to an ancient Greek verb meaning to see clearly, to watch and to observe. This means that the names of the houses may well directly imply they were in fact observatories or watchtowers. Archaeological excavations have taken place in 1959, 1960 and from 1978 to 1980, but they didn't help to answer the countless questions that surround these mysterious ancient structures. Numerous pots were found inside the Mount Ocker structure, and they also found a pit that was dug inside, inside which was found utensils, animal bones and pottery fragments, some of which contained inscriptions, and these have helped to date this site from the pre-classical to Hellenistic periods. Interestingly though, one of the pot shards was inscribed with an unknown type of writing. Historians, archaeologists and archaeoastronomers can give their opinion on the origins of these structures, but in truth nobody really knows. It should be noted that dragon houses are not found at any other sites in Greece, so the type of structure does seem to be unique to the island, although there is one similar structure in Attica. Whatever the truth about the origins of these structures, they're certainly an interesting curiosity of ancient Greece. Unique structures, carefully planned and constructed, and now just silently watching over the landscape. A genuine mystery of the ancient world. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.